So I unboxed and set up the Sony Xperia Air Geos about two, three weeks ago, and I've been using them on and off since, just out and about in my everyday life. And this is what I reckon so far. Design-wise, they are still very super awkward to put in, unfortunately. I'm constantly getting flashbacks to the first time I had intimate relations. Lots of groping and pushing and is it in yet? Still, once you do manage to finally shove them in your lug holes, they are quite comfortable to wear for extended periods. They're surprisingly light, about 10 grams each, and those rubbery tips don't probe too deep, so to speak. Of course, I do feel kind of conspicuous strolling down the street with these things stuffed in my skull. Kind of like those business w back in the early 2000s who constantly had a Bluetooth headset attached to their face. Both pads are touch sensitive and they recognise various swipes and multi-tap gestures. And best of all, those controls are fully customisable. It does take a little bit of getting used to, however, as those touch pads are obviously stuffed well out of the way. Occasionally I'll try and change the volume with a swipe and I'll end up pausing the track instead, although it seems to be happening less and less now that I've got used to them a bit more. That said, the likes of triple taps are basically a waste of time, it always seems to screw up, so I definitely suggest sticking to the single and double taps. That unique design helps to keep your ear canal unblocked at all times, so basically you can hear everything that is going on around you, which makes them ideal for wearing, for instance, while you're cycling in order to keep you safe. It also means you can happily use them while you're working, as long as you're not actually trying to block out any of those annoying colleagues. And they do leak a little bit of noise, but not any more than most other earphones, to be honest. However, the sound quality isn't quite amazing as you might well expect. The likes of rock music sounds kind of fuzzy and dance track just lacks any kind of bass or body, so it sounds a bit flat. If you want to use these for entertainment while you're commuting on the go of the likes of that, we definitely recommend sticking with the likes of podcasts and audiobooks, which are absolutely fine. Likewise, that open nature means that you'll need to really bump up the volume if you want to hear anything in a really noisy environment, so they're not much good if, for instance, you're sat on the tube. But at least there is adaptive volume support built in so you don't have to manually fiddle around with them all too often. Sony's assistant works alongside the Google AI to keep you updated on everyday activities. You can activate her at any time to get a summary of news headlines, get a weather report and any upcoming events that you might have in your calendar as well. And again, it's fully customizable so you can remove any bits that you don't want. We definitely recommend getting rid of the new stuff as most modern day headlines are just clickbait bullshit anyway. So for instance, you'll be hearing stuff like, what time is the England Panama match on Sunday and how can I watch live and will Harry Kane score? What a bag of w if you do get a message on the likes of Gmail or Facebook Messenger or something, the assistant will also read it out for you, which is really helpful, and also frequently amusing when a good chum sends across a particularly offensive comment. Thanks, guys. However, whenever I got a call from a contact, that name was not read out. I just got the ringtone in my ears instead, which isn't great if you get a lot of spam calls and you want to ignore the majority of them. Occasionally, she'll just pop up with a random comment too, like, it's 9am, have a wonderful day. Although she doesn't sound particularly sincere when she's saying it, just kind of like a disgruntled neighbour saying, hey, don't accidentally trip down the stairs and die or anything. Overall, the Sony Assistant is still pretty limited, but hopefully it'll grow with updates. And at least you do have that Google AI support for any queries and other bits that you need alongside. Even if Google's effort is still far from perfect also. As for battery life, you get roughly four to five hours of use per charge if you are constantly using them. But if you're mostly just using them for notifications, they should see you through the full day. And you can also charge them on the go at any time simply by slipping them back in the case. You get at roughly two to three charges before the case battery also runs dry. So in verdict, the Sony Xperia Air Joes are super comfortable to wear all day long as long as you don't mind feeling a bit conspicuous with the odd awkward glance you might get from a colleague or whatever. They're fantastic for keeping up to date with your notifications as well if you don't want to be constantly pulling your phone out of your pocket. And that open ear nature is absolutely fantastic, especially if you do a lot of cycling or you just want to wear them all day long and still actually have conversations with people. And they're definitely not one for music lovers, however, and that assistant is still fairly limited in its current state. So that's my full review. Thanks for your patience, everyone who's been waiting uh, since my unboxing to actually hear my in-depth thoughts. And don't forget, to hit a bit, uh, 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 don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to hear more about the latest and greatest tech. Love you, boy!